Okay, this video will begin to introduce the uh, techniques that you use to compute inverse Laplace transforms. Um, now the first thing that we need to remember is that uh, we don't compute inverse Laplace transforms using the integral definition of the inverse Laplace transform. Instead, uh, if we're not using some automated tool uh, like Wolfram Alpha or uh, the many uh, uh, applets that you can find on the web to take inverse Laplace transforms, um, what we do is we basically use a table. And so um, this is a table that I copied from a Wikipedia article on inverse Laplace transforms. And uh, you can see that it has these pairs of time. This is a time function, and this is the Laplace transform. And so, for example, the unit step function uh, transforms to a 1 over s. Um, and there's all sorts of stuff in here that you typically don't use that much. The ones that we're going to use immediately are these two, a decaying exponential transforms to 1 over s plus alpha, where alpha is this value up here. Okay, so the idea is that we are going to take a, um, we're going to take a arbitrary function, which is expressed in terms of a numerator polynomial and a denominator polynomial, and we're going to manipulate it so that we can find uh, pieces of what we're looking for that look something like, say, 1 over s, or 1 over s plus alpha. So the idea is to, uh, to do those manipulations. Once we find something that's a 1 over s, then the inverse transform is easy. I know that that chunk is going to end up having an inverse transform component of u of t. Or if I find a 1 over s plus alpha, I know that the inverse transform is going to look like this. So the idea is that we're going to manipulate things to look like what they are, to, so we can find them in the table, and then we're just going to write down what the inverse transform is. My thought is to do this by a series of examples that will get uh, more and more complex and introduce more and more issues and ideas that you'll have to think about. So the first one, let's suppose I want uh, I, I want to take the inverse Laplace transform. Oh, I'm not going to actually call it h of s. I'll just write down what it is. I want to take the inverse Laplace transform of, say, 10 over s. And so I look at this and I say 10 over s. I go over to my table and ask, is there a 10 over s? Well, there's a 1 over s. That looks sort of promising. Uh, nothing else looks like it's even close. So how do I get this 10 over s to include a 1 over s? Well, I can say that this is 10 times 1 over s. Okay, hopefully we're not going too fast for you on this math. Uh, that was a joke. And uh, now that I have this form, uh, I know that the 1 over s term transforms to u of t, to the unit step function, what do I do with this 10 out in front of it? Well, you'll remember that the Laplace transform is a linear operator. So if I multiply something in the Laplace domain by a, a constant, I multiply the corresponding time function by that same constant. Okay, so there you have it. We've done our first inverse Laplace transform. Uh, 10 over s transforms to 10 u of t. That wasn't so bad, was it? And we used this pair in the Laplace transform table. Okay, well, hopefully so far so good. Let's look at a slightly more complex example. Uh, let's suppose that we want to take the inverse Laplace transform of 5 over s plus 3. 
Okay, again we look through the table and we see something where we have 1 over s plus a number, something that looks like this. Now that's the closest we've got, so the question is, can we use that? Well, not directly because we need 1 over s plus alpha. In this case, alpha would be 3. But we need to have this be 1. Well, but in the same way that we did before, we can write this as 5 times 1 over s plus 3. Now we know from the table that the s plus 3 transforms to e to the minus 3t u of t. Again, that's this transform pair. Um, and this, again, because the Laplace transform is linear, this 5 is just going to give us something in the constant in front of the e to the minus 3t u of t. So there you have it, our second inverse Laplace transform. Okay. So far, so good, right? You're saying, well, this doesn't look bad at all. And it really isn't that bad. But let's look at now at a case that's slightly more complicated. Okay. Suppose I have a Laplace transform that looks like this. And I want to uh, take the inverse Laplace transform of this. Well, um, there's a couple ways I might do this. One is I'll notice, one way to do this is to notice that I have an s squared here and an s here. So I can factor an s out of the denominator like this. Okay. And at this point, we might now look through the table. And this happens to be a fairly comprehensive table, an unusually comprehensive table. So if I look at it, I actually see that there's something here that hasn't... Whoops! I discovered that I've made a mistake here. That was bad. Hopefully uh, you can stop shouting at the screen now that I've screwed up. Okay, so now with this corrected, I go look at my table and I can see that I have this guy which is alpha over s times s plus alpha. Well, I might be able to get this, uh, this expression to look like that. Um, I need to have something that looks like 2 over s times s plus 2. Okay. Now, in order to have the same thing out here, I need to have a constant 5. So if you look at it now, it looks like we've got exactly this, this part here is exactly what we have in the table with a constant 5 in front of it. So we can say that this transforms to 1 minus e to the minus 2t u of t. And my constant in front of it is 5. So I put that out there, and that gives me my time function. Okay. So this actually is a fairly good place to uh, stop this video. Um, what we've done so far is we've basically taken expressions uh, that look something like this. You've got a ratio of two polynomials, and we've manipulated those expressions until we get something that looks like it is from the table. Once we've got something that's from the table, we can just write down what the inverse Laplace transform of that something is. And then if we have, um, if we have a constant, that constant can just be put down in front. And we're good. We're using uh, the table, and we're using the fact that Laplace transforms are linear. Now, um, it turns out that if we ended up with something with our s term here, if we ever end up with the sum of two terms that we can find each of those in the table, then we can write that down as the sum of the two time functions. And we'll actually explore that in a lot more detail in the next, in the next video where we'll introduce partial fraction expansions. 
So this will uh, conclude this video.